cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and I think today's video is going to be very helpful for a lot of you, and quite frankly, it's going to be helpful for me too, because today I am building my first kit printer. That's right, I've been 3D printing for quite some time, but I never actually assembled my own printer, even though that's how a lot of people get started with this hobby. Gearbest has sent me their Anet A2 printer. Now the A8 model is probably the best seller. It's been around the longest, I believe. But the A2 is very similar, so whichever printer you're interested in, uh, this should be a helpful video. The A2 has an aluminum frame versus acrylic. Uh, it's a little lighter, and everything else is almost the same. Anyways, let's open this up, and hopefully I won't be completely lost. Hopefully there won't be any parts missing. And hopefully by the end of the day, I will have a new working 3D printer that only cost about 180 bucks. Oh, I guess I should acknowledge the wrist brace. I went climbing for the weekend and uh, I guess I went a little too hard. Serves me right for taking a break from making great internet content. Ah, probably shouldn't do that. Quite a small package, so I'm interested to see what this thing turns into. Okay, I guess I wasn't supposed to open it that way. Here we go, we got stepper motors, shiny and new. So we got a fan and the hot end, some brackets, bunch of screws, some bearings and nylon spacers, the power supply, aluminum rods, threaded rods. I got another stepper motor in here. So I guess this is the way I was meant to open it. This is really exciting. I mean, building a 3D printer is kind of a rite of passage, I think, for anyone who wants to be into this hobby. It's the cheapest way to get started, besides maybe building your own from scratch. There's an assembly video link, so we're gonna have the instructions there. That'll be something I have to look at. We've got the heated build plate with some styrofoam on it. There's still a, an acrylic part here. The power supply with some loose ends. Some little finger protectors. A micro USB card reader. Some more acrylic parts. Some more wires. Some tools. I'm gonna get a pair of clippers in every printer, I guess, so it's gonna be clipper madness in this house. All right, one more layer to open up. Yeah. We got a bunch more tools, some uh, belts, USB cables, little uh, touch sensors, Z-stops or whatever they're called. We've got the board, the controller, some more aluminum parts, some more acrylic parts. All right, so here are all the parts that we're gonna need to build the 3D printer. And uh, I guess next I just have to watch the assembly video and figure out where I'm going from here. All right, let's do it. First of all, rest assured there is plenty of that satisfying peeling to do of these plastic protectors as well as paper films on all the acrylic panels. So if that's your kind of thing, awesome. <laughs> I'm not gonna show the whole build, but I'll just touch on a few things. First of all, the very first instruction on the video told me to use these 14 millimeter M5 screws, but really I wanna use the M12 screws. So that made me pretty worried about the rest of the build, but luckily that was the only misdirection. The other hurdle I ran into were these holes where you're supposed to screw the end stops onto these acrylic panels, but the holes were a little bit too small and I had to use a Dremel to open them up, otherwise the screws would just strip themselves. This probably isn't the case for most kits. Maybe it was just a bad batch, maybe it was just my weak wrist, but just realize that I ran into that problem and if you don't have a Dremel in hand, something like this could halt your build. Other than those two hurdles, everything else went pretty smoothly. So I'm just gonna show you this time lapse of the entire build condensed into a few seconds. As you can see, I was referring to that build video that Annette has available on YouTube and that's gonna guide you step by step through the entire build. Whew. All right guys, well, it took something like six, six and a half hours to assemble this thing. <laughs> and me just being eager to get things done, I did it all in one day. 
Assuming that this works, which is probably a big assumption, but assuming that this works on my first try, it was a relatively easy build. It's just following instructions and it went rather smoothly. The biggest problem was those screws that had to tap into acrylic. And that's something that happens with laser cut parts because depending on the focus of the laser and just the age of the laser and the power settings and all the things they're using, uh, those holes could change size a bit. So in this case, the dimensions were a little too small. But anyways, time to stop delaying and see if we can start a print without starting a fire. <laughs> I'm just gonna use some super lube on the threaded Z axis rod and then I'm gonna plug this in and we'll see what happens. Oh, also the wire management was kind of a mess, uh, but that's probably my fault. Hopefully that's not too big of a deal. Plug it in. Okay, still no fire, no immediate burnout. That's a good sign. And I've already got the SD card loaded, so... Menu. Let's just go ahead and look at the settings here. Ah. All right, super bare minimum leveling, but I just wanna see if, if I can uh, get some plastic coming out of this. Let's see, quick setting. Preheat, there we go. As you can probably tell, I didn't know exactly what I was doing here. And while the interface isn't completely intuitive, I did manage to get a print running. Even with just eyeballing the leveling of the build plate, I actually got a print coming out pretty quickly. As you can see, the part is kind of warped and wobbly, but at this point I was just excited to have something printed. I did notice that one of the screws I installed here underneath the belt was actually the wrong height and it was rubbing up against the belt and causing some problems with the print, so that's one thing I had to fix. Plus this Bowden tube is a little longer than it needs to be. So I think cutting that down would also help reduce friction. Nevertheless, the print did complete successfully, albeit a little wobblier than it was probably intended to be. After that print was complete, I went ahead and made the changes to the little problems that I had noticed, replacing that 14 millimeter screw with a 12 millimeter screw. And I also cut off the end of the Bowden tube. That way the filament doesn't have to travel quite as far to reach the hot end. With that done, I was able to go ahead and print some more parts, and I decided to make a little part that would increase the tension on the belt of these printers, because I had a hunch that that was also causing some of the wobbliness of my prints. Here's my Magic S. I designed it in SolidWorks in about five minutes, and you just clip it in like that to increase the tension on the belts. And I made two of those so that I could tighten the belts on both the X and Y axes. I definitely think that increased tension improved the print quality. As you can see with this little tab I made to help press down the lever for the extruder. The hole was a little bit undersized, but I was able to just heat it up with a lighter for a few seconds and then press fit it onto that bolt. Another quick improvement I made was adjusting the position of these little gears that drive the belts to line up better with the pulleys. And that made everything just move a little bit more smoothly. Those are all the fixes I'm gonna do for the time being, and I decided to print out a Benchy, the classic benchmark print. Here's that completed Benchy, and you gotta give it props, it did complete, but it's also super rough. 
It's got a lot of warping on the bottom and a lot of stringing wherever it was moving between small parts. I'm pretty sure that those problems are almost entirely due to the fact that there is no fan cooling the parts themselves. And I, I thought that was kind of ridiculous. I mean, you always want to have a fan cooling down the parts to prevent them from warping up and just to make everything much cleaner. I tried to fix the problems temporarily by lowering the temperature and increasing the retraction, but they both came out pretty much the same. All right guys, well there you have it. That is my first impression of the Anet A2 printer. I've gotta say, going into this, I really didn't know what to expect out of a $180 printer, and the results are not bad. The fact that I was able to build this and get something printed in one day is pretty awesome. The parts that are coming off of this printer are pretty rough right now, but I think that's kind of the way you gotta expect these printers to go. It's a hobby printer, you know, it's meant to be tweaked, it's meant to be worked on and modified so you can learn about 3D printing and improve the quality as you go along. I'm pretty certain that adding a second fan to point at the nozzle will fix a lot of this warping and stringing and that's the next thing I'm gonna do. Then you can upgrade extruders, you can put the spool coming from above so it's not bending in at a weird angle. There's a lot of little tweaks you can do. So I guess that's my conclusion. If you've never 3D printed and you're willing to mess around and learn from trial and error, then this is not a bad first printer for you to get. If you're expecting beautiful parts ready for production, then maybe this isn't the printer you're looking for. But for any beginner, any tinkerer, I think it's cool. I had a lot of fun with the build and I'm having fun already printing upgrades for the printer on the printer. That's always a cool thing to do. If you're interested in the Anet A2 or any of the Anet series printers, you can check them out on GearBest. They're the ones who sent me this one and I'll have a link in the description where you can buy it. Hopefully I'll be able to continue working on this printer and upgrading it and I'll keep you guys informed on the progress I make. But that's it for today. Until next time, I'm Devin and this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.